Let us proceed with session one of an exciting panel discussion on creating conducive grounds towards conflict resolution. I now invite panelists of the session, Justice Ramesh Dhanuka, Dr. Mahesh Karandikar, <laughs> Srimati Manisha Varma, Dr. Anand Balyogi, and moderator of the session, Ms. Tanu Mehta, on stage. We are delighted to introduce you to the distinguished dignitaries of our first panel. Our first panelist is Justice Ramesh D. Dhanuka, who retired as the Chief Justice of Bombay High Court in May 2023, is a well-loved judge known for his composed demeanor and sharp acumen. His calmness and fairness whilst dealing with the toughest cases has earned him many accolades. He started his practice of law at Bombay High Court in 1985. In 2013, Justice Ramesh D. Dhanuka was confirmed as permanent judge of the Bombay High Court and was later elevated as the Chief Justice of Bombay High Court in 2023. Justice R. D. Dhanuka is now part of the APEX Advisory Committee of IMC International ADR Centre. It is our honour to have you with us, sir. Our next panelist is Dr. Mahesh Karandikar, a celebrated neurosurgeon. Sir is the chairman and managing director of Karandikar Hospital of Neurosciences and Research Center, Nasik. He is an active member of many medical organizations like Neurological Society of India, World Stroke Organization, North American Spine Society, European Epilepsy Society, Multiple Sclerosis Society, and many more. He is a committee member of the Maharashtra University of Health Sciences and has been awarded many prestigious awards, including Man of the Year in Medicine 2008 Award by the American Society. He has published a book on spine and brain surgery in Marathi, which is used as a reference book by the government of Maharashtra in schools and colleges. We welcome you, sir. Our next panelist is Srimati Manisha Varma. Srimati Manisha Varma is a seasoned Indian Administrative Services Officer and an alumnus of the Howard Kennedy School and IDS Sussex. She has held prominent positions in various sectors including finance, education, tribal development, skill development and entrepreneurship. Her dedication to sustainable, inclusive and innovative programs has earned her numerous accolades. She is an expert on social development, leadership training, public policy, and management. She is presently serving as the Principal Secretary and Managing Director of Maharashtra State Finance Corporation. Thank you, ma'am, for being here with us today. Our final panelist of the session is Dr. Anand Balyogi. Yogacharya Dr. Anand Balyogi Bhavnani is by education a medical doctor and by passion, a yoga sadhak. He is the director of the Institute of Salutogenesis and Complementary Medicine and professor of yoga therapy at the Sri Balaji Vidya Peet University, Pondicherry. Sir has served as member of numerous expert committees of the Ministry of Ayush. He is the chairman of the International Center for Yoga Education and Research at Anand Ashram, Pondicherry. He is a gold medalist in medical studies with postgraduate diplomas in both family health as well as yoga. His literary work have more than 3,100 citations with an H index of 28 and an I-10 index of 63. In addition, he is a classical Indian vocalist, percussionist, music composer and choreographer of Indian classical dance. He is an honorary advisor to International Association of Yoga Therapists. We Extend a hearty welcome to you, sir. Thank you for being here. Our moderator of this session is Tanu Mehta. Tanu Mehta is a legal professional mediator and conflict resolution specialist with over 25 plus years of experience. She is currently also the honorary chairperson of the Committee for Mediation and Conciliation at the Bombay Chamber of Commerce at Mumbai. She was the first Indian to have studied a master's degree in mediation from Israel. 
and was instrumental in launching India's first MA in Mediation and Conflict Resolution whilst acting as Director of the Centre for Mediation and Research at the Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. Tanu is empanelled with many mediation institutions, both private and governmental, apart from being an accredited member, mediator of the High Court of Bombay and the City Civil and Sessions Court. She is also one of the founder members of Association of Mediation Practitioner and is an advisor to India's first dispute management company called Presolve 360. We welcome you with us, ma'am. I'll now invite Dr. Karandikar to give a completely different perspective from law. Good afternoon, everybody on the dais of the dais. In this August gathering of primarily lawyers and honorable members of judiciary, many of you might be wondering what a neurosurgeon is doing here. The whole idea is to know whether the brain can be restructured the brain circuits can be rewired to create conducive ground for conflict resolution. And if the answer is yes, then could this make an individual a better person? Could this build up better societies, better nations and a better world to live in? For this, we need to understand a few basic things about brain. See, uh, brain is different from all other organs in the body. Because every single organ in human body has exactly the same structure in every individual. Like all of us have eyes with exactly the same structure. So whenever you are looking at somebody else, you register exactly the same picture. Everybody has exactly the same ear. So whatever I'm talking, all of you are hearing the same sentence, but everybody has exactly similar structured brain, which functions entirely differently in every single individual building personalities. That's the mystery of brain. Now, there is a famous story from Cherokee culture, which comes from the Smoky Mountains in North Carolina. The story is told by the grandfather to the little child. It talks about two wolves in the brain. Everybody's brain has got two wolves. One represent aggression, hatred, Disgust and the second represent love, affection, friendship, forgiveness. And the story goes and which wolf wins decides everything. And the message which is given by the grandfather to the child is always try to nurture the good wolf for making a better life. Now can this message be uh, percolated into the society deeper down? For this, we need to understand a few basic things about brain. Brain has different parts. One part is temporal lobe, which is a seat of emotion. And the other one is frontal and the prefrontal lobe, which is a seat of intelligence. Usually, when you respond to something, the response comes from the frontal and the prefrontal cortexes. This response is based on intellectual facts, proper analysis, thoughtfulness. The temporal lobe, which is a seat of emotions, if the response comes from there, then this is a response of unthoughtful aggression, pure emotionality, not understanding the uh, pros and cons. And it's a, what we call is a knee-jerk reflex. So many times the behavioral response, if it is purely restricted to temporal lobe, then there is something called a neural hijacking. The frontal lobe is hijacked and the uh, temporal lobe doesn't allow the frontal lobe to function to its optimum level and that's why many a time things go wrong. To understand the behavioral responses, we can think of five different areas in brain. See, uh, the initial question which I raised, restructuring of the brain and uh, rewiring of the neuronal circuits is a very big topic. I'm trying to touch few things because I'm pretty aware that I'm talking to a non-medical platform. There are five levels in the brain from which the response comes. As we evolved, the human brain is the most evolved brain amongst all species. So as we evolved, the brain evolved from the reptilian brain. The reptilian brain is a very basic brain, you know, it deals with very basic function. So if the response comes from the reptilian brain, then it is an irrational, illogical response, emotional response. The next level of brain is the limbic brain. 
where there is some element of emotion either positive emotion or negative emotion the third level is the cortical level where there is some analytical uh, foundation to the response the fourth level is prefrontal cortex which has some element of passion forgiveness and consideration and the last is of course beyond the brain you know intuitions and uh, uh, better thinking about the society and the world from that perspective and interestingly as you study patanjali yoga the opening verses of samadhi pada are atha yoga anushasanam and yoga chitta vritti nirodha the basic definitions of yoga and vyasa's commentary on this underlines five different states of mind which corresponds to these five levels of responses coming from the brain which i just spoke about neuroscientifically the first one is kshipta chitta or kshipta response from the mind which is a wandering mind like a monkey you know jumping mind the second one is mood mind or a full mind donkey's mind the third one is vikshipta mind which is you know partially focused like a butterfly the fourth level is ekagra mind one pointed mind which is comparable to the mind of the crane when he's focused on the prey and the last one is the niruddha chitta which is the most balanced and always focused mind so the whole journey of progression has to be from kshipta to niruddha and patanjali yoga in the samadhi pad gives a detailed flow chart as to how to progress from the primitive level to a higher level also mentioning in uh, verse 30th and 31st the possible obstacles not stopping before giving the solutions to those obstacles in verse number 32 neuroscientifically speaking subodh ji in the morning session spoke about some scientific publications and there is no time for me to quote various papers but i would just quote a publication published in british medical journal just 6 months back in the june issue which is a systematic review of 1663 research publication which underline the importance of yoga meditation pranayam in the improvement in physical health as well as mental health emotional health psychological health so those of you who want to go into the details just go through this publication of british medical journal in june now the basic functioning and the optimum response from the brain depends on the state of neuronal chemicals see neuronal circuits have junctions which are full of chemicals called neurotransmitters and there are various hundreds of types of chemicals but important group of chemicals is serotonin which deals with peace happiness love affection and the other one is dopamine which is related to aggression so the dynamic equilibrium between serotonin and dopamine decides the behavioral outcome how does this knowledge help us when we are doing arbitration or mediation the factors which can improve serotonin if we implicate say simple chocolate would imp- uh, improve the levels of serotonin a nice peaceful music would improve the levels of serotonin a nice attire friendly gesture shaking hands s- uh, good perfumes all these can you know create high serotonin levels and increase the conduciveness of uh, mediation and arbitration and uh, the whole idea is to change the way you look at the world because the world remains the same in kashmiri shaivism uh, it has been mentioned that uh, there is a verse called vismayo yoga bhumika means the world is same but if you change your vision to look at the same world you will find the way, world very different very conducive and uh, our goal of all this is to achieve this again since the time is limited we already started pretty late Tanu ji has planned some question answer sessions before I stop I would uh, just end with uh, one sentence which probably would make all of us think my stubbornness for a costly pair of shoes disappeared when I saw somebody with amputated legs so I think think over this and when somebody comes for conflict resolution ask them whether this valuable life the short amount of time energy and money you have is it worth spending in years of conflicts and uh, adjudication because finally adjudication would make one person happy as against this platform which can make everybody happy thank you thank you so much thank you